Dr. August de Oliveira. I am a general dentist from Los Angeles and I came all the way to the IDS to talk to Gideon from Form Labs. Uh, Get, uh, Form Labs is based in San Jose. Um, I personally own this printer. We're looking here at the Form 2 printer from Form Labs. One of the things that I love about the Form 2 printer is there's a ton of dental resins available. They just released a few. So I'm going to let Gideon take this away. The Form Labs printer is called an SLA printer. It uses a beam of laser light to cure a photosensitive resin. So we've been looking a lot at DLP printers. However, here we're using an SLA printer. Gideon, tell me a little bit about this printer. Right, so this is our second generation machine, um, and it's it's hard to believe that it's only been uh, since April of last year since we've been really focusing on the, the dental market, uh, but it, we're really excited. I mean, there's a lot of excitement here at IDS this year about 3D printing in general, um, and, and we're excited to be part of this trend of like uh, building new manufacturing tools for, for digital dentistry. Uh, this machine itself, I think, uh, changes the calculus on that one in, in a couple of different ways. I mean, traditionally, 3D printing has been held back by by high costs, bad reliability, and machines that were really hard to use. And we think that this machine really changes that. So in the US, this machine is $3,500. That's about 10 times less than, than most other competing uh, printers uh, th that are out there. And, and, and we're excited about a lot of things about it as well. So uh, let me just stop for a second. So we've been interviewing different companies that have had machines in the range of $14,000, $22,000, um, to buy the package, which which includes the Form 2, it includes um, some resin and a cleanup station uh, in the U.S. is $3,500. Now, I highly recommend that you get the um, the protection policy, or what do you call that, plan? Yeah, we have a professional service plan where you get video training, uh, you get uh, phone support, um, and if there's ever, and this is quite rare, but if there's ever a need for your machine to be serviced, what we do is we uh, send you a, another machine beforehand, before you send your machine back so that we keep you uh, up and running um, as much as, as possible. Uh, yeah, so I, I think that's a great service for professional users in the, in the dental industry, but it's an optional add-on, definitely not, not, not quite necessary, but uh, something to take advantage of. So, so these are the different types of resins. Uh, Gideon, tell me a little bit about each one. Yes, uh, so we're, we're really excited about uh, the new models, model material that we've brought to uh, IDS this year. Uh, this is a high accuracy resin for Crown Ridge model applications. Um, and what's really exciting about this is, is how much further we've pushed in terms of accuracy and precision uh, using the same uh, printing system. Uh, it's obviously got a different color, which, which uh, the feedback from the market is that it's very good, but uh, uh, you know, it's got accuracy that's comparable to $75,000 3D printers out there. And, and if you want to talk a bit more about how exactly we qualify to that, I'd, I'd be happy to. Actually, Gideon, that's a great idea. So I've been using the gray three material, and I love this material. Um, one of the things about the Form Labs printer is the laser spot size is 140 microns. Mm -hmm. So maybe you could tell dentists a little bit about how this is more accurate than that. Right, so there's a lot of different ways that companies are supposedly talking about accuracy in 3D printing. Uh, the most important thing really is to be skeptical and to try to print yourself and see what actual results come out. Uh, for example, you know, the laser spot size is 140 microns, but that doesn't mean that the accuracy is limited to that. Uh, we did a study uh, with uh, Dr. Michael Scher as well as some partner labs where we printed over 150 different crown and bridge models and dyes, both posterior and anterior, on six different Form 2s and scanned every single one of them to check what sort of margin accuracy and global accuracy you get out of it. What we found was that printing on our 25 micron print settings, uh, you get plus or minus 30 microns for the for the die accuracy. Uh, printing at our 50 micron settings, you get plus or minus 45 microns. Um, and both of those are, are enough to be totally clinically relevant for getting dies that, that fit the restorations extremely well. Uh, and, and that's the type of thing that, again, you can just actually print, scan, and, and compare. So this is uh, something that I've always wanted to do. In my office, I have four different 3D printers. So I'm in the process of printing out a prep, making a crown in CIREC, and trying it on each one. Now, this statement is pretty awesome. So what he is saying is with a printer, let's just say it's $3,500 if you don't get the plan, will print out acceptable accuracy with printers that are 
$20,000, $50,000. So that's really incredible. So let's talk about some of the other resins here now. Form, Form Labs is coming out this summer, I believe, with a clear splint material. So I'm excited about using it, obviously, for night guards, but also using it for surgical guides. I know it's not a big deal to have an amber-colored uh, surgical guide, but I'd really like to have a clear guide. So, um, so this is great. Now, what a lot of people are really excited, though, at your release is the denture-based material. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so the, the we're actually making two materials for that, both for printing the, the denture base and the denture teeth. Uh, technically, you could use the denture teeth material for temporaries as well. Uh, so we're taking a little bit of a different approach than, than other companies in the space in that we want to make sure that we fully qualify the workflows, that we work with clinicians and partner labs, that we do clinical studies to make sure that these workflows are fully developed. Uh, so you can see here, this is this is a, a denture that's, that's made... Uh, that's fully 3D printed and then assembled and, and polished afterwards. I mean, the results are, are really okay. amazing. Oh my God, so both the denture base and the teeth are 3D printed? That's uh, that's right. So we, we're going to have multiple workflows available for this. Uh, in some cases, uh, people may 3D print the denture base and then use prefabricated teeth, uh, but it's definitely possible to, to print both, and that's the type of workflow, workflow that we're working on with our, our partner clinicians and partner labs. Let me go one step further, though. Are are you saying that we may have a temporary material, that we can make temporaries with the denture teeth material? That's an application that's that's certainly uh, in the realm of possibility with that material. It's something that we're qualifying with our with our partner clinicians. From a biocompatibility perspective, uh, that's definitely possible with this material. Uh, but what we want to make sure is that when we release applications, when we release materials, and we actually ship them, that people are going to be successful. So there's there's other companies out there that are demonstrating uh, similar things. Some of which who are already selling this. Uh, we're taking a slightly different approach where we make sure that in terms of precision, accuracy, in terms of final results in terms of success rates and acceptability with patients, uh, that we know that that's fully developed and fully checked out uh, beforehand. So this is something that we're uh, aiming to ship uh, towards the end of the year. Um, and again, we're going to be doing a lot of work in the, over that period to make sure that by the time that this hits the actual uh, uh, dental lab or dental practice, that it's fully developed and, and people know what to do at, at every step. So. Again, I, I, I hate to keep coming back to this subject, but this is a $3,500 printer. I mean, you can get into 3D printing with dental resins for $3,500. So a lot of people, because, hey, we're dentists and some of us are kind of cheap, are getting into buying an FDM printer. So an FDM printer is a hot glue gun printer. Um, you're limited in accuracy by the size of the nozzle, which could be between 300 and 400 microns. A lot of people are using it. They're just using whatever material they think. A lot of people are printing in a material called copolyester, which is what milk jugs are made out of, or uh, something called PLA, or polylactic acid, which is a resin derived from corn oil, I believe. So tell us a little bit, Gideon, about why your resins are different, why they're dental. So uh, a little bit, but, uh, the difference between maybe food safe, ISO, and FDA. Uh, so what you're really getting, again, as you're describing it, uh, as you're extruding that that uh, that, that plastic uh, for FDM methods, is you're going to get a lot rougher surface finish. With SLA, you get really smooth uh, surface finish, much more um, isotropic parts. Uh, and and as you can see here, you get really really fine fine surface details. Uh, and so that's the biggest advantage you get. Um, also, working with SLA technology, there's a lot we can do in terms of uh, biocompatibility, in terms of material properties with the with the different formulations that we make. Um, and so if you're looking for really high performance uh, materials, really high performance printing, uh, SLA, uh, you know, photopolymers are, are really a, a great way to go. So uh, one thing that I want to point out to, so FDM is like a hot glue gun. It, it prints layer by layer from extruding out of a tube. And one limitation is those layers may not fuse completely. And so if let's say I was printing out a night guard, it's sitting in the mouth night after night after night. Bacteria is going to get into that separation and you end up with a very, one, stinky night guard, but two, uh, you get a real bacterial problem. So the layers in SLA printing or in, or in 
in form, the, the form labs too, are completely fused and the surface smoothness is a lot greater so it's less likely to retain bacteria. So again, I just want to say thank you for coming out with the form too. I love this machine. It is my workhorse machine. I use it every single day in my office. So please come check out uh, Form Labs and the Form 2 printer. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. All right. Sweet.